Uh, we're on our way out to Dallas to uh, watch a little college football playoffs. We're on our way to talk to Tom Luganbill right now. Is, is that a Bearcat? Is that a Bearcat hat he has on? Is that UC for Cincinnati? No, no, no. That's uh, my scouting company, the UC report, underclassman report. Okay, just clearing it up for those that uh, – have bad eyesight here. <laughs> Threw me off too. I, I got, like, I got, I got, I got no allegiance with my hat game. I can assure you. <laughs> and Luke and Bill's brought to us every week by our friends at Jack's Western Way. Yeah, Jack's Western and outdoor just off I sixty five in Coleman. Luke gets his boots from there and uh, cowboy hat as well um, that he showed you not too long ago. Let's talk about <clears throat> Alabama and Cincinnati, Luke and Bill. When you look at um, the Alabama run game, it it has been. Up and down this year, it was better against Georgia. Right. A lot of people make such a big deal out of those cornerbacks for Cincinnati. What about Alabama's run game against the Bearcats? Well, that's the thing that's interesting about the defensive secondary. You don't just have two corners out there, right? You've got a couple of safeties. You might be in nickel, might be in dime. You're going to have some different personnel groupings, and they've all got to get involved too. Everybody seems to be focusing on the edges in the passing game. Well, you're going to have to cover the slots. You're going to have to cover number two and three in a trip set. And then you're going to also have to come down and play the run. I mean, listen, if I'm Alabama, I am testing Cincinnati's depth and I'm testing their metal between the tackles. I'm going to send a message early, line up and say, all right, can you stop us? All right, my Jay Sanders, fantastic edge rusher. What happens if we line up and run right at you? What's going to happen? And then all of a sudden they make, a rotation on defense next group comes in i promise you that next group's not the same talent level so i think alabama's got to take care of that talent gap that they have such an advantage in but they've got to establish it early in the run game see if cincinnati can hold up because it's going to be a long game for them and they're going to have to play a lot of players on defense and and you know it's interesting you mentioned that because things kind of came together versus georgia right not just in the run game but certainly in pass protection you had a clean bryce young so you're peaking, you're playing good, you have your best game, and then all of a sudden you have this big layoff, right? And that, that's one of my biggest questions in all of this. Michigan was spiking, man, just hitting their stride, win the Big Ten championship, you beat Ohio State, now you have the layoff. Which team can regain that form and pick up right where they left off to get off to a fast start? Uh, Desmond Ritter, a ton of experience, 43-5 and five as a starting quarterback for Cincinnati. How do you feel about Ritter having success against this Alabama defense? They got to run him. They have to run him. They really do. And, and I say that because it's the one theme I think we would all agree on over the past decade with Alabama's defense. If they've struggled, if they've had a hard time, if they've given up some plays, it always seems to be the result of an athletic quarterback. Whether the guy's making plays on the run and he's scrambling and creating second chances, or they're just lining up and they're saying, we're going to run quarterback counter, quarterback power, uh, zone read, get them on the perimeter a little bit, force Alabama to play 11 on 11 instead of having to play 11 on 10. And what I mean by that is if the quarterback's not a runner, all right, in, in the run game, you got an extra hat defensively. So Desmond Ritter, he can make the throws. I think he's a bit sporadic at times, but in the run game is where I think he's going to have to have a significant role to, to force Alabama to have to cover the entire field. A-Chain and Spiller had big nights, as did Calzada when A&M uh, upset Alabama. Uh, other than Desmond Ritter, do they have any playmakers uh, that should concern Bama fans going to this game? Do they have any edge speed, any, any guys who can change the course of the game other than Ritter? They got the little slot 21 that, that can go. He can really, really run. They're really strong at tight end with Wiley. They actually got two of them. Um, and then Alex Pierce, number 12, the, the guy on the outside now. Are these guys George Pickens? You know, are, are they A chain or spill like you're talking about? May, maybe not. I think I think Ford is up there. You guys should know about him, and and we've seen the type of career he's had at Cincinnati. He was a significant upgrade for them. Um, but I don't think this is you know LSU skill personnel. I don't know if it's Old Misses skill personnel. So not to say they can't make plays and that they you know that they're not going to be able to to get open and things of that nature. But I would anticipate that Desmond Ritter is going to have to throw into much tighter windows than maybe he has in the previous 13 weeks. ESPN, <clears throat> excuse me, all of a sudden it's falling apart. Yeah, ESPN, okay. Dude, are you all right, bro? No, I'm really not. I got the booster, man. I got the booster uh, Thursday. 
and it knocked Bro. me it knocked me on my butt for two days so i, I gotta bring that that's so funny you say that because i got the second shot and it walloped me for about six hours but then i got the booster on 23rd and it hit me for about three hours after the three hours is done i was perfectly fine it was the weirdest thing well, I wish I could. I, don't know, I wish I'm I could trade with you. Good. No, yeah. I'm all right. I feel great. I sound awful, but I I feel amazing. It's the weirdest thing. Um, oh, all right. <laughs> there are not many Will Andersons. They don't grow in trees. If you're Luke Fickle, you haven't seen a player like that this year. What do you do if you're Luke Fickle? How do you attack Will Anderson or avoid Will Anderson? You know, it's interesting because I think when these types of questions come up. Oftentimes, and Mike Denbrock's the offensive coordinator at Cincinnati, has done a remarkable job, and they love to be in two tight end sets in the run game. So they love to be in 12 personnel. And I, I think sometimes in the run game, you can help try to neutralize a Will Anderson by forcing him to have to play to the strength of the field, where you might have a tackle in two tight ends, and they're running. They love to run the stretch outside zone. Um, but what I think happens sometimes is, you get so caught up in saying, oh, we got to account for this guy. We got to account for this guy. You create all these plans and all these different things you're going to do. And at the end of the day, you realize, you know what? We should have just played. We should have just lined up and played. And if he's going to make some plays, he's going to make some plays. But let's not change everything we do for one guy. And, and I've, it's interesting because I've had conversations with coaches in our production meetings going into games, asking that same question you just asked, and they'll come up with with a pretty elaborate answer and then you'll have a production meeting with a coaching staff that just came off of a game where they did that and almost to a man the coach says we paid way too much attention to it should have just lined up and done what what, what we do and so i are, are they gonna have a plan maybe that plan is going to include misdirection across motion uh across the formation motion maybe a lot of bootlegs naked things to get the defense going one way while the play is going the opposite way would probably be my guess there from a game plan standpoint. So going into the SEC championship, Georgia's defense was giving up 231 yards per game. Bama goes 536 and 41 points. Do you still yeah. believe this is a generational defense for Kirby Smart? Yeah, I do. But you could also be talking about a generational offense for Alabama that they that they got pinned up against a kid that just won the Heisman Trophy. I mean, that's that's not Michigan on offense right now. So I think what happens is 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 things settle down a little bit. and Maybe the matchup is actually more advantageous versus Michigan as it was for Georgia against everybody else they played aside from Alabama. Remember, guys. We had this conversation multiple times, and it was a topic in the media of when is Georgia actually going to play anybody that's any good on offense that could challenge them? And that question was asked each and every week, and it ended up being Alabama in the championship game, and they got, and they got stung. So I actually look at this Georgia game and this Michigan game as the quarterback with the fewest pass attempts will be the quarterback of the winning team because both of these teams want to run the ball. Both of these teams rely on getting ahead of the chains, getting in manageable second and third and shorts. All right. What they don't want to do is attempt 45 passes. George, that's not George. That's not what you want. Stetson Bennett. It's not what you want JT Daniels. If he goes to do. And I think even for Michigan, while they're a little bit more spread oriented than Georgia is, and maybe JJ McCarthy is a little bit more dynamic as a runner and a passer than Cade McNamara is just uber efficient. They don't want to be tossing it 35. 40 times a game. So whoever controls the ground game and is able to run at will and has the fewest pass attempts, I think wins the game. Kirby Smart's greatest moment as a college coach came in the semifinals, true or false. That went over Oklahoma's his high. It's his biggest moment, isn't it? To this point. Yeah. You know, to this point, it's funny. You asked that question. We were doing our Sirius XM show yesterday morning and myself and Barrett Salee were talking and we were asked the question, would Kirby Smart rather uh, lose to Michigan in the semis, then get to the national title game and lose to Alabama again. <laughs> and I said, well, my answer to that is any coach worth their salt wants to play for a national championship. Okay. It doesn't matter who you may lose to or who you get matched up with. The goal is to be in the game and have a chance to win it. So that would be my answer to that. But yeah, I, I think the bottom line is how many, how many people have had a lot of true success against Alabama? What Dabo, um, Gus Malzahn. Gus Malzahn. Right? And, yeah. And when we say a lot, we're talking what, one or two, three times. So 
it's easy to maybe pick on Kirby, but it's not like everybody else is lining up and kicking Alabama's tail either. So in fairness, being there, getting your program in position to actually play the game needs to count for something too. Gus got himself another nine and four while we were off. The guy could, <laughs> the guy could go nine and four with the best of them, Luke's. By the way, he did it with, a thir- with his third quarterback, he, too. Yeah, he did. He did no, he beat Florida. I'll give, him, I'll give him credit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something, man. That that job between them and Cincinnati and those two heading into the Big 12, considering what the state of the Big 12 is, that they got to be uber excited about their future because now, I mean, the access to players that they have, what that conference is going to look like going forward, they could rise really, really quickly. All right, he is ESPN's Tom Lugan. Bill, big week for you. You want to give everybody kind of a heads up what they can see coming up from you this week? Yeah, so I'm hopping on a plane here pretty shortly. We'll get the, uh, we've got all kinds of bowl festivities. Got the cheese at Bowl with Clemson and Iowa State on uh, the 29th. And then we've got the televised Under Armour All-America game practices on the 30th and the 31st. Got the Citrus Bowl on the 1st. And then the Under Armour game on the 2nd. I get to come home so I just literally got done spending an hour and a half trying to figure out how am I going to pack for all of this stuff without checking a bag and I think I pulled it off oh wow no you're one of impressive. those guys one of those guys you don't check bags <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> well good luck on that all right ESPN's Tom Lugabell follow him at Tom Lugabell see him on ESPN with all those events safe travels Lugs we'll see you next week thanks guys take care have a good one all right thank you Lugabell on the Pepsi hotline and he's presented by Jack's Western and Outdoor Wear just off I-65 in Coleman